were supposed to be in the group, but um, it didn't really work out that way. So we're here today. We've got a lot to cover. I think you're going to love this teaching and hearing about it and seeing what is possible for you. So if you can hear me, say something in the comments. Let me know you're here. Say hi. Um, I'm going to give you a little introduction of myself and then we will get started. So... So, um, I have been the owner of Ripe Personal Chef comments, Services in Scottsdale, here, Arizona guys. for the last eight years, um, and we have five chefs that work, that work for the company part-time, and a full-time so, culinary manager, um, and about 10 to 40 for inquiries or leads per month meaning people that contact our chef service wanting to find out more and ultimately booking, hopefully booking, and that results in about anywhere from $10,000 to $15,000 per month in revenue for the company. So having those leads coming in on a literally daily and weekly basis is really, really important. The way that we do it is I have a website that is set up in a way that lets people learn about the service and contact us to find out more in a very easy format. And that's what I want to share with you today. So what we're talking about is the five steps to attract high quality leads through your website. There's so many more, but I'm going to just concentrate on these five, either the basics of what you need to know and it's the place to get started. So who has let me just go over to the page so I can see some comments, so I can see what's going on. Um, if you're here, say hi. Tell me where you're from and let me know. Oh, good. Hey, Robin. Let me know if you could hear me. Jupiter Jack. That's a cool name. Um, tell me you could hear me. I'm viewing this like a little bit funny and we were supposed to be in another location. So I don't know who's going to pop over, but it don't matter. Um, tell me, do you have a website already set up for your personal chef business? Give me a yes, give me a no, I'm working on it. Um, and tell me, how is the website working for you? Do you get clients contacting you, asking for more information? Are you getting, um, complete crickets and have like nobody, um, contacting you from it and you feel like it's just like a static business card that's online. Tell me what your website means for you. Okay. You're in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Perfect. Robin, I think you're in Florida. Um, I hope you're okay with the hurricane stuff. You haven't set it up yet. Okay, good. So this is a perfect place to start for you. Excellent. So, like I said, we I use the website as probably my most important marketing tool. It is it literally brings in 90% of our revenue and the way the flow of information goes like this. People go online, they search for certain keywords. For example, Scottsdale personal chef and then my business comes up very high in the ranking, usually one, two or three. And then they click on it to find out more. When they get to the website, they have to, first of all, realize that they're in the right place, meaning they clicked on this and it is giving them information that they're looking for and they're confirming in their head what they think to be true, meaning this is a personal chef located in Scottsdale. They do in-home weekly cooking. The, you know, what they provide, they do vegetarian, paleo, blah, 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 whatever it is they're thinking, the website needs to confirm that or they feel they're in the wrong place and they will move on. So that's the flow of information. What I want to share with you is how we get them from searching online for those words to your website, to engaging them, and then from having them pick up the phone to call you. That's a lead that's an inquiry. So those two words I'll say um, interchangeably. So if you guys have any questions 
write them down on the side. Um, I'll teach for about 10, 15 minutes and then we'll do questions and we'll just get right into it. And um, I might ask you guys questions while we're going along. Please um, write those in the comments and then we will be able to talk about those too. So the way we use our website is more than an online business card. It is a dynamic way, meaning it keeps changing to tell people about you, your service, and the most important thing, how you can help them. That is why they're searching. They're not searching to find a bio on you. They don't care what an amazing chef you are or where you've worked. They're searching, meaning having an inquiry in their head online to find an answer to a problem. The problem could be many different things. It could be I don't have time to cook. I don't know what to cook. I am stuck with interesting things and my family is getting bored. I don't want a food shop. I don't want to clean up. Whatever their reason is, maybe they have a medical issue. They were recently diagnosed with something, um, anything like that. So their inquiry is what's driving them to go online for the search. That search has words to it and a string of words to it and it's usually a location and then what you do so my key search words for my company usually are scottsdale personal chef meaning the location is scottsdale and the job description or what they're looking for is a personal chef now we're going to talk about other ways that people search because they could be searching like Phoenix meal delivery or Scottsdale in home cooking or vegan chef Scottsdale. So we'll play with a string of words and ultimately this is what you'll do as part of the work for your website. So the first thing we're going to talk about five steps. Each step is going to have maybe two or three points to it. If somebody wants to write in the comment box as I'm talking, Hey Sharice, um, you could be taking notes for yourself in the comment box and then come back to that if you're at a desktop or you have time to do that now. Um, so that will be good for you. Or you can write down notes, but I'll be just talking about a couple different things at once. The first thing is the look and feel of your site is important. People know if you've spent time, money, and energy investing in your website, and they know when you did not. Now, this is not to say, and I don't want you to get hung up on this and not make a website or think, if I can't hire a designer for $5,000, I'm not going to do it. Doing it is the most important. The second important piece is that it has to look and feel like you care. It needs to be modern. It needs to be interesting. It needs to have colors and fonts and pictures that match you and what's going on in your business and the services you're providing. If you see me looking over here, I have some notes, so that's why I'm looking up. Don't use that as an excuse not to move forward. I don't have money. I don't have time, this and that. I don't care. It has to, the look of your site matters. You're sending people there, maybe from a business card or a postcard. You're also trying to get online traffic there through keywords and search words. So the point is people are going to land up there. It's like coming to your house. You're telling people, come to my house. This is what I do. I want to talk to you and hang out with you. And then your house is a mess. It's a shithole or you don't clean up or you have shitty old furniture. It's like people don't want to see that. They want to get there and like what they see. So pick mod pick a modern theme, pick colors, graphics that match you and your business, like I just said, and don't be afraid to spend some time on this. It's a website is not something that's created in five minutes or one day. It is an evolution over time. And it is the most important thing to attract people to you is it has to be a good representation of you. So keep that in mind. Um, another point is you don't want people to think you don't care about your site. If it's an old, outdated site or you haven't updated 
the text or a blog post in over a year, people will see that and they might think you're out of business or they might think, you know, they don't really care what they do. So it's not going to, it's not a good fit for me because I really care about the food I eat and I want somebody to be involved in their business. Some resources for this part of it. This is the look and feel of your site, part one. Use a drag, this is if you do not have somebody doing it for you. Use a drag and drop site builder. Even if you type those exact words in, drag and drop site builder, you are going to find a lot of options. The first one is Wix. Second one could be GoDaddy. Second one, uh, third one could be home site builder. These are all what we call drag and drops, meaning they have templates and themes laid out for you. You could search for food. You could um, take one from like the health industry and make it work for you. There's tons of options and you are plugging in your own information and it's all set up. Try that out. You could use Squarespace. Um, some of these have yearly fees. Some have monthly fees. Whatever it is, look around and choose the best option for you. There is nothing wrong and it is normal and valid to pay per month or per year for your website. It is such an important marketing tool. Do not think this should be something free and I don't want to spend any money on this. It's a good place to start if it's free, but if you really want consistent leads and turn your website into a cash machine, you need to invest your cash into it. So don't be afraid to pay $12 a month. $15 a month. That's not a lot of money for what you're going to get back. What else? I also like Canva, which is a graphic, um, what would you even call it? They help you make graphics on, um, your, you can create your own graphics there with different types of text and copy over it in all different kinds of fonts. They have free, um, backgrounds, pictures, stuff like that. That is really valuable and you can make your graphics there and then pop them into your website drag and drop builder Canva a paid option that I heard is really good. I did not use it myself, but I might in the future is called 99 designs and what this is is a website that lets you enter your project meaning I need a five page personal chef website. Here's what it has to say and designers bid on your project or you put in a flat rate and say, here's what I can pay for this, um, who's interested, or they have flat rates like 500 for the setup of this, whatever it is. They have a lot of modern designs and people, they're real people who want to help you. So check out 99designs. Another option is a, a website called Upworks. And this is a platform where you find designers and people to help you um, in your business. And if you say, I need help setting up the template for my web design or putting in the graphics or doing a logo, whatever it is, you can find people on Upworks. I've used them before. It's very good pricing. You just have to be very specific with what you want and who is going to help you. And then... Um, move forward lightly. Don't, you know, do a $2,000 website with somebody you've never spoken to or, you know, that's far away or something. Try to um, go slowly into that. You use Canva for social ads. Perfect. I'm glad you use Canva. Canva. I love it. Okay, good. That is part one of this five-step process of getting quality leads through your website. You have to make your website look good. Number two, make sure you're talking to the right person. What this means is when people arrive at your site, they need to know they're in the right place within five seconds. If they do not know that or it's confusing, they will leave. So ask yourself these questions while you're creating the text for your website. Who are your services for? And this needs to be specific. It can't just be men, women, and children who like to eat good food. That's not specific enough. That's too many people who are never going to buy anything from you. It has to be specific. It's like, I am a vegan chef based in Chicago. These are the areas I service. 
I service busy professionals, young families, and people who value their health and want to eat a plant-based diet. That provides a, um, a more streamlined picture of who you are cooking for. So when that plant-based vegan gets to your site in Chicago, they know they're in the right place and then they're ready to move on. They can click on services, they can find out about you, whatever it is. Either way, make sure your copy is clear on who you are providing service for. The next thing is why do they need you? This is addressing their problem right away, meaning if you're focusing on busy professionals, the reasons why they need you are they don't have time to shop. They do not know what to cook. They don't want to spend time cleaning up. If you are specializing in dinner parties or small intimate in-home events, the reason why they need you is they want to invite friends over and not worry about cooking. They want to have a unique menu that they don't have to spend weeks, you know, slaving over and they want to have help. They want a server and a sommelier and they want a chef to come in and they want a really special evening. These are the reasons why they need you. Make sure those reasons are listed as text on your website. If it is not, they will not know they're in the right place. The whole point of this number two is making sure you're talking to the right person is what do they need from you? If they cannot find what they need from you, they will move on. If they are looking for meal delivery and to a hospital because their father is sick and you don't provide meal delivery, that needs to be on there. Or if you only do dinner parties under 10 people and these people are searching for a wedding of 300, they need to know that they're in the wrong place so you can attract the right clients to you. That's what having the right messaging on your website is so important. Number two is making sure you're talking to the right person. So the words that you use on your website need to match what the client is looking for. This gets a little into the search engine part of it and the how your clients talk in the real world. So this is what I mean. If People are talking, let's say, in a conversation, in a Facebook group, or at a networking event, and you hear two women talking, and they're like, oh my gosh, I really want to do a plant-based diet, but I have no idea what to cook. I saw someone at my work, and she lost 30 pounds, and this is what I want to do. You're hearing in her exact words her problem and what she wants. Some version of that needs to be on your website. So when she's searching for a plant-based chef in Chicago, you come up, it's because you have written those words in copy on your website. So I talked about what they're saying in their own words. Here's where you're going to find this out. This could be in the real world, whether you are at a yoga studio, a gym, a networking event, and you're hearing people's conversations, you could be involved in the conversation, not pitching your service, just talking, or you could be joining Facebook groups that have to do with plant-based diets, but not saying, hey, I'm a chef, buy my services. It's getting in the conversation and being a part of the conversation and hearing what people are saying. That's what's so valuable because when those people search for you, they're going to land on their site and they're going to think, oh my gosh, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. I do need to lose 30 pounds and I do want to do it on a plant-based diet, but I don't know what to cook and she's going to help me do this. So that's how they know they're in the right place. This is two, making sure you're talking to the right person. You need to use clear and concise language. People are reading uh, it could be on their phone, it could be on a desktop, it could be at work, they could be at a stoplight. We have no idea. The point is, the attention span is short. Nothing's wrong with this, it's just the way it is. Um, you have literally 10 seconds, I don't even, I wouldn't even say 20 seconds, 
of attention from a person when they get to your site. If on the home page, they cannot understand what you do, they do not know where you're located or how you're going to solve their problem, they're going to be gone. People don't have time to investigate. They don't want to like read through your stuff and see if they can understand what it is. They want to know right off the bat. So your home page is the most important page of your site and it needs to be the most clear and the most concise. One second. Tell me if this makes sense to you guys. Do you have people coming to your site and clicking off? Do you not even have the website up yet? Are you struggling with what content to put on the homepage? Are you struggling with, you know, what words need to be on the website? Like, tell me what you're struggling with and if this is making sense to you. Let me just pop over here and refresh this. This is taking a little bit. Perfect. Okay, good. All right, cool. Let, some people are having a hard time hearing. Tell me, it might be the connection or the weather. Tell me um, if you guys could hear me, just give me a yes or a no. I can turn up the mic a little bit, but it also might be the internet connection. Okay, I'm going to give you some tools now to help you with making sure you're talking to the right person. There's something called Keyword Planner, and that is a Google, you know, service. You don't have to pay for it. It's, it comes with just online resources that Google helps you with if you want to run Google AdWords, which you do not have to do. But the Keyword Planner is ways that you can plan what keywords need to be on your website and what is important to people that are searching. So if you are searching, if you um, go in there and check it out, it takes a little bit to like go around there and just see how it works, but it's pretty cool. You can figure out what string of words is most important. Okay, good. You guys could hear me, Katie and Robin. Perfect. And I don't know if you guys could do this, but I was supposed to be in the group and I know you guys are both in the group as well. If you could copy and paste the link of this live stream in the group. Tell me if you could do that. I don't know. I'll try to do it too. If not, they'll watch the replay. But um, for some reason, I couldn't go live in the group. It was weird. So keyword planner, try it out. Um, I know after years of experience, the string of words, Scottsdale Personal Chef is searched a lot. And it reflects what we do so those are words that we work on over and over you can also do it for events that you are related to in your area like if the super bowl is coming because they came here two years ago or three years ago um you could start do those words super bowl weekend personal chef 2015 you know whatever it is and start to get some traction on those words. So check out the planner, keyword planner. And we talked about this a little bit, but talking in their language is so important because they need to be able to think that you understand their problem and that you can help them. The way you do this is you use the exact words that they use. So if you work with people with dietary needs that are medical based, meaning they've had a health issue or they need to do a life change, hanging out, I know it sounds weird, but like not in hospitals, but like um, in medical communities or around doctors or in Facebook groups online that deal with that specific issue. Like if you know how to do um, a kidney diet or a renal failure diet or no salt, diabetes, um, cancer related, getting in those groups online, hopefully locally based, meaning they're in your area. So you're actually interacting with people who could want your service. If not, that doesn't matter. You're still learning the way they talk. So if you're in a cancer support group and 
you're hearing over and over that people have been cutting out red meat. They have been having little to no sugar or they're having no processed ingredients. This is something that you could catch on to and see the way they're talking about it and what they want in their life from that. Who understands what I'm saying? Who has tried anything like that before? Have you gone into Facebook groups or networking events and just kind of listen to what people are saying about food and what they need? And let me know if this has helped you out. Okay, good. Perfect. So that was number two. Make sure you're talking to the right person. Number one is the look and feel of your site is important. We're talking about the five basic things that you need to have in your website creation and on your website to make sure high quality leads are coming to you. Number two, make sure you're talking to the right person. Number three, you want to make sure your content is up to date. A website is not just like a business card that you hand to somebody and walk away or hand over and they throw out. You, our advantage to having a website is it is a living, breathing thing that you update and can be an ongoing reflection of you and your business and the progress that you have and the people that you help and how far you've come. And we don't want it to remain the same. A website is not a one and done deal. It is something that you're going to go back to over and over and make sure that the content is up to date. There's nothing worse than getting to somebody's website, going to their blog posts and seeing something from two years ago or even months ago, like, cause now text up, I mean, um, copy and the internet updates so fast and the stream of information back and forth is so fast. If I get to a site and somebody's blog post is from eight months ago, I think they're not in business or they don't care about their site or they don't know what they're doing and they have no clients. And we don't want them to think that for you. And I know this takes up time and you might be like, I don't have time to do a blog post every day, every week, whatever it is. You do not have to do that. What you do need to keep in your head is if you are your client, you know, if you are the prospect or the inquiry, what do you want to see when you get to a site? I want to know that it was updated about 30 days ago or less. If I can't tell, meaning there's old outdated menus, they're referencing things that are really old in like um, blog posts or a calendar event. Sometimes I go to websites and the calendar will be set to something eight months ago and it'll be like register. I can't register. I can't do anything. How do I even know you're in business? So making sure your content is up to date is really important. Um, Here's why Google and your clients want to know that you care about your site and you, that you're involved. Google likes fresh content. They have bots trolling all over looking for new content and what to pull in search, you know, records. If your content is old and outdated, it's not going to keep pulling you up to the top. That's why we do blog posts. That's why that is the way usually service providers tell people they are involved, they're up to date, and they want to communicate with you new information. Even though our service is food-based and it is in the real world, by attracting people through, their, through your website, you have to show that you're relevant and that you're, you're in time, that you're present. And that's with doing relevant things and updating new content. So we're talking about having your site up to date and your content being done. Blog posting regularly is the way to do this. There's a couple other ways, but um, we commit to one blog post a month. So every 30 days, you can make a couple at a time and schedule them out. Every web platform lets you do this. WordPress lets you do it. I mean, they all do. So what I like to do is cut a half day on my calendar, even a whole day, and take, you know, five to six hours and write five blog posts with pictures, 
um, with relevant information and get it just on there and making sure that we have stuff going out because people do check it. If you know, you're like, nobody goes to my site, it doesn't matter. That's like the exact wrong way to think about it. It matters because people are there and they want to see your new information there as well. What I really like to do with blog posts is tie it to an event or a date or a specific thing going on in my area. So when people search for that, it comes up. So here's an example. There, there's a car show in our area called Barrett Jackson, which happens, I think it's in March. But if I title a blog post, Barrett Jackson car show in March, 2018, Scottsdale, what should I eat? When somebody searches any of those words, this blog post is going to come up. And what we could talk about in that post is what to eat at the show, what snacks to bring, where to eat out after. You could say, if you're renting a home for the show, here's stuff we've done for previous clients and let them know the service you provide. You're not selling or advertising through your blog posts. That's not what we want to do. We want to give out information and, have, and start a conversation. So somebody could comment, hey, um, usually I just buy food at my local store and I keep it in the um, freezer when we come and we rent a house, but I never thought about getting a chef. Can you guys help me with this? What dates do you have available? Then it turns into an inquiry and that's what we want. That's how you make a booking and that's money. So we're talking about number three, making your content up to date on your website. Tell me if you understand what I'm talking about. If you have any questions, let me come over here. Robin, you're thinking about talking with my, your local hospice. That is an excellent idea. Find out what they're talking about and how they need you and what's going on. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. We're, let's go to number four and then we can do a little questions. Number four is, I'm going to go over the main pages that I want you to have on your website. You can expand on these, but these are the basics. And like I said, also, people don't want to wade through 300 pages. It's not who has the biggest site or who has the most, you know, information. It's who can answer my problem the quickest and who is more of an ideal match for me. So here's the, the pages that you should have on your website. You need a home page, obviously. This is the first place they land and they see who you are, what services you provide, and what area you service. Second thing is you're going to have an about page or like a meet the chef page or a bio page. This is not a long, boring story. This should not be 70 paragraphs about how you stood in a kitchen with your grandma. That's great and I want to know that, but I want to know it quickly and fun and in an interesting way. It shouldn't read like a resume, and I've seen that a lot. It's it's just people won't go through it. It's not that it's not right or it's not good or your experience is not valid, but you're not going to get people's attention enough. They'll read the first two lines and they'll move on, either to another page on your site or off your site. So what I like to do is structure it as the first line is who you help. Even though this is a page about you and your experience, your experience in business right now is helping this person or people like them. That needs to be in your bio and it should be in the first paragraph. Because when people think, I'm in the right place again. I went on the homepage. I like what I saw. I like what she does. Let me just see about her real quick. And then the first two lines of the bio are also about me, the prospective client. I'm even more happy. Um, then I could go into my education and my experience. Again, don't re don't do it like a resume. People don't care. And that's not what's going to sell them on you. And even though that stuff is important, like if you are talking about 
I know I'm trying to give an example. You want to do highlights and stuff that's important. Like if you travel to Paris and you did an internship or a stage or whatever, people love that culinary travel. It's amazing. But that's not what's going to get you the job. What's going to get you the job is they feel like they can trust you and you can solve their problem. Okay, that's your bio page. Include a picture of you, preferably in a chef's coat. Um, if it's not in a chef's coat, have it be um, like professionally. It shouldn't be anything like revealing or you know something inappropriate um, I like to show um, also you could do a sh in a chef's coat which is your professional thing that's the first thing but then if you at the end want to include something about your life or something fun that you do that I also definitely want to do that about hobbies people want to see you're a real person and it could be completely not food related because people will connect to that talking a little about your family um, if you have kids, if you have pets, what your passions are, if you've had um, an illness or something you've gotten over, and why you became a personal chef. This is important. People want to know your path and your struggles too, because they have the same struggles. And if they can find, you know, a comparison of themselves in you they will trust you and want to call you okay that's your bio page these are page these are the main pages to have on your website number four of the five things that you must do for your website to bring you quality leads next is services pricing and menus these can be separate pages, these can be one page, it doesn't matter. It's the content of the information. You have to address all three things. Services. This is the services you provide to people. Pricing. This is the cost of the service that you provide. And then the menus are options of, these could be sample menus, these could be real client menus of things that you can cook and provide and solve their problem with. That's, that's what you're doing. So here's a little debate on if you should include pricing on your website. I don't know. What do you guys feel about that? Do you include pricing on your website? Write in the comments if you do or if you don't and why. I'm interested to know and then I'll tell you my take on that. So in terms of services, I'm actually going to go into that next. So I'll just leave that a little Services need to be clear, they need to be concise, and they need to be like very easy to understand. I mean, a four or five year old needs to be able to get what you do very quickly. Pricing structure should be also very easy to understand. Don't have 50 variations of this meal, that portion, this, mix and match this, that, whatever. They're going to be confused. A confused mind never buys. All we want them to do is pick up the phone and call you, send you an email, or book an appointment with you. If they're too confused to do that, meaning your website says 200 for this, it says 300 for this, it says 325 for this, it says 199 for this, it's too much. You're, you don't have a restaurant menu, and it's not like... A crazy smorgasbord of pick and choose. I know a lot of people try to capture a lot of different people that way, but it only makes them more confused. We want high quality clients that are ready to book you. Pick up the phone with a credit card in their hand. If you're offering them 50 different things, they don't know what they want. You're the professional who is going to suggest meal structures that will help them after you hear their problem. We can't even get to that point if they are not on the phone and calling you. So it's got to be clear enough that they could say, okay, it's four entrees. I get four portions. It's 16 meals for the week. It could be used for lunches and dinners. It's a protein, vegetable, and a starch. Okay, me and my husband could eat that. We can eat, you know, Lunches and dinners four days a week, and then we'll go out or I'll um, make something. All right, let me just call her and make sure I understand this. 
that's the the type of thinking we want if somebody is like I literally don't even understand this they're not gonna get on the phone with you and let you you know sell your story or you know get a lot of you know give you a lot of leeway to explain it so I highly suggest working on explaining it well and then having pricing that is really clear okay let's do some comments okay Lori you do not post pricing on your website my feeling is I'd rather provide pricing upon request or in an email okay cool Katie I don't have a website up yet but I definitely have my pricing on it simply because if I were searching for a PC I would want to know at least a ballpark figure or I would click off perfect that's that's I agree with that and that's what I teach in um, my coaching clients and that's what I have in my business and it's a couple of reasons I'm gonna tell you three good reasons why to have pricing on your site I've done it both ways um, in the way beginning I was scared that if I put my price on people would click right off and I wouldn't even get them on the phone so I would do like a low grade bait and switch like I would get them on the phone and then try to make them think it was worthwhile and they would just be shocked and be like why would I pay $300 for this and these were poor clients that I was attracting they weren't good leads so the first one is you want to weed out the people right off the bat who this is not for and let them self select out which means if I'm searching for a personal trainer my budget is only $50 an hour if I fall on somebody's website who I absolutely love and they charge $350 an hour I'm not gonna call them because I know it's not a match for me and I've self selected myself out I don't want to waste this guy's time being like oh I can only pay 50 or can we only do 15 minutes over Skype and then I can pay 50 like I don't want to it's so it's a waste of time for both people so that's the first thing you want to weed people right off the bat let them self select out I don't want people calling me for a $10 meal I do not want people comparing me to Sunfair Blue Apron freshly I don't even know what the hell else is out there they know this from my website the second part of it is it lets me as a new business owner commit to a price so I'm not wishy-washy when I get people on the phone and this happens a lot if you don't put pricing on your site and you kind of want to field inquiries and see what they want you will might come off less confident because you're trying to gauge price on them versus your rate and what you want for your services which is really the value of the problem that you're solving so I would get on the phone with this happens a lot with dinner parties because at first for our dinner parties I wouldn't have pricing on the site and in my head I'd be like I want $50 a person and I'd get on the phone with people I did not have pricing on my site and they would go on and on how they wanted this amazing event and it's this one's birthday and they want five courses and blah 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 and I said okay the price is $50 a person and they're like oh but I could only pay 25 could you do it and then it gets into a like weird negotiating thing which sometimes is fine if you're open to it and if you have um, good guidelines and if and if it doesn't come off desperate but if this person saw on my website before prices start at $50 a person it's for three courses here's what you get like my services were really laid out we either wouldn't have got on the phone or she would have said listen I can't pay 50 but I could do 45 what what can we do for that and that's more of a match so those are two reasons why I like to put pricing on the site I want people to weed themselves out I don't want to get on the phone with crappy leads um, the and it commits me to a price so I'm not wishy-washy when they get on the phone if they've already seen that the service is 325 and they get on the phone and I tell them it's 325 and they say oh that's a little more than I thought and I say 
yeah, I, I totally understand. Did you see the website? And then they're like, yeah, and I, I know it's worth it and blah, blah, blah. And then you get to almost have like a, um, I don't, I'm not like a safety net, but something out there that supports what you're already saying on the phone, meaning you're referencing the website and you're referencing other happy clients or prices for my dinner party start at 85 a person. Here's why. Um, here's some of the menus. And then you can shift the conversation. If you don't, you're kind of just pulling stuff out of air and you might um, back down on your price. You might include things you don't want to it just might get a little weird so that's why I do that okay we're talking about number four pages to have on your website you must have a home page you must have an about page which is the chef's bio your page um, you must have a services menus and pricing page it could be all on one page it could be two separate pages it could even be three in terms of the menus quickly when people okay don't overload with menu items people do not want to see a cheesecake factory list of 75 things they could get we know you could cook a million things you're amazing it doesn't matter they don't care they want to see a curated high quality list of items that either clients have chosen before that you have cooked or your top specialties whatever it is don't overwhelm i like to do each category, meaning let's say a protein, vegetable, and a starch category, no more than five to eight items each. And they should be varied. Don't do 30 chicken things. Do like one chicken, one fish, one beef. Um, give people a, a broad idea of what you could do, but don't overwhelm and drown them. I don't want a list of 30 things. It, it reads like a catering menu or like a cheesecake factory menu. You're a personal chef. You do a boutique high-end service. People want to feel that way. Um, what else? Menu pages should have pictures of food on it. It doesn't have to be crazy, but if you just click, let's say you click on a page and it's just a list of food items. You don't even have anything in the top navigation of food or anything. It's not as engaging as four or six very nicely worded items and then two or three pictures next to it even if they're not even the actual items you should try to match those but like if you're doing a vegan menu don't put like a rack of lamb on that page obviously but people just want to draw that connection and all you're getting them to do is think that sounds good i want to eat that that's all we want from that page if you're over explaining stuff or doing intricate fancy things for no reason on these pages, it could be a turnoff to people who don't even know what they are. And we all want to think rich people who have money are educated and they know what, I mean, even, even normal things like mascarpone or like whatever. Just don't overwhelm them with like fancy items. You want to always come away with, that sounds good, I want to eat that. That's all, they, that's all we want them to think. Um, it can, you can be a little fancy more in the dinner parties, but like for weekly in-home cooking, people don't want crazy stuff. They just want food that tastes good and that they know. If it sounds familiar to them, they will be more likely to contact you. Whether you're provide then if you're providing crazy fancy stuff that they're like, I don't know if I'm going to like that. Or, you know, maybe I would try that one day, but like my kids are not going to eat that, you know, whatever it is. So that's for your menus page. Include pictures of food. You could arrange it. Lists of items, meaning your proteins, your vegetables, and your starches. Or you could do um, a composed menu, which would be like, baked salmon with vegetable quinoa and roasted asparagus, meaning all of it is in one thing, and then they can picture themselves eating that as well. We actually do both. So think about what you want to do for that. The next page you're going to have to have on your website is a blog page. 
This is how people get updated information and content about you. This is how Google knows that you're involved and you care about your website. He talks about this a little. You do not have to post every day. We post once a month, every 30 days. Something new has got to go up there. And make it, you can bulk it together, but think about just what you're doing in your biz, everyday business life. Even if you're just starting out, you have zero clients, you're working a nine to five, I don't care. You still have stuff that you're doing. Maybe you went to the farmer's market with your kids this weekend. Maybe you were at work and you noticed a new food truck outside and you want to talk, whatever it is, and you had a conversation with them and you want to interview them. Things are going on in your everyday life that's going to be relevant for this blog post. If you're a health coach and you are also working with someone on a meal plan and you can write blog posts about the cooking lesson you did together or you could do a tiny video and put it on your website. You can do recipes. Don't make it all about recipes because that's not so much what stuff or, uh, people are searching for. They might, but clients are really looking for an answer to their problems. So it could be more of, here's what my clients do with the eight hours they save a week when I come. And then list like the top 10 yoga classes in your area. Okay. And then you must have a contact page. This is the most important. I mean, they're all important, but um, you have to give people an easy way to contact you. It's kind of like going to your house and having the walkway overgrown, newspapers all over. It's not welcoming. If you make it hard for them to contact you, they won't contact you. They're not going to go through hoops to find you and contact you. So on a contact page, and this is going to be other places in your site too, ideally, but I'll talk to you about the contact page. You must, 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 this is beyond a must, include what areas you service and where you're located. I cannot tell you how many personal chefs that I have seen, food service provider, ton, whatever, tons of businesses related to this, they do not say where they're located. We run a location-based business, meaning somebody who books me is going to be living here in Scottsdale, in Phoenix, in, you know, wherever. Even if somebody is coming from Canada to rent a house here, they still need to know that we are based in Scottsdale because that's where their rental home is. You must have your location. Ideally, it will say specific neighborhoods, towns, and areas you service. If you are vague, you are going to get vague shit inquiries. Sorry. Um, you do not have to service everywhere. You do not have to drive 50 miles from your home, 100 miles. You just have to be clear. Also, this is information that Google is pulling. So if you're writing specific neighborhoods that you service or gated communities or kids and families that go to El Dorado school, whatever it is, Google's going to take that information. And when somebody puts that in personal chef in Greyhawk, that is a community here in Scottsdale that's affluent. And I want to come up for that. And I do. So put that in there. If your contact information, meaning your phone number and your area code doesn't match your location, that confuses people. I know a lot of people do this. They move from another place and they don't bother to change their phone number. I don't like this <laughs> at all because when I call a personal chef in Phoenix, I don't want to have a 917 New York City area code. It makes me think people don't even bother to change their phone number. I don't care how long you've had it. You run a business in this location. People have to know that they're in the right place. If they think, Jeez, is she in New York? Is she from New York? Is she traveling? They're not going to click on you. Your phone number should match where you are. Your email address, if you're putting it on your website, have your email be stephanie at ripe personal chef. I don't want to see stephanie at gmail or 
Stephanie at Yahoo. All of these web providers provide you with email access. I don't care if it costs $2 more, do it. It, it looks way more professional. It shows people that you care about your business, that you have a brand, that you have a name, and that it's important to you. That's the, the um, contact page. You can have a form on the contact page, which lets them enter in information and they submit it to you. You could have a link to your online calendar where they can schedule a call directly with you. That's what we do. I love it. We use time trade and people can go on and book a call directly with our culinary manager at a time that's good for them, meaning the client. We play no phone tag. We play no guessing games. The people that book calls become clients 60 to 70% of the time. It's because they've already identified themselves as they're interested in the service. They've taken the time to book the call and it's important enough for them and their schedule to have this blocked off. So we love an online scheduler. Um, I've gotten rid of the contact form. I used it for a while. I found it was a little too vague and you wind up chasing people who may or may not be interested. Booking a call requires a little more of a commitment than just filling out a form and saying, hey, call me, or, you know, I want to know a price. It's just too vague. I don't, I don't love it. Um, if you are putting your phone number on your site, answer your phone. <laughs> if you let it go to voicemail all the time and it's a voicemail of your kids um, leaving some cute message, people don't want to hear that. It doesn't have to be a specific business line, but it has to be professional, meaning you have reached Stephanie Heller with Right Personal Chef. Please leave me a message. I'll get back to you within one hour, within um, a half a day. Be clear on when you're going to get back to them. If you want their email to communicate with them, ask for that. Um, the most important thing about contacting is you have to be responsive to the leads. People are likely searching for several personal chefs at the same time. This is uh, pretty big with Yelp and people asking for quotes. They will shoot out a million of them and if you don't get back to them in 30 seconds, they're booked. Yelp is another story. We could go into that another time, but you have to make a guideline of when you're going to reply to people and how this is important to you and you're going to show them it's important. If you don't get back to people for a week, they don't care. They're going to think it's rude. In Like we said before, in this day and age, the, the, the way that information travels is so freaking fast. If we don't get back to somebody within an hour, they're like, not pissed, but they're like, not as excited. And we hear all the time how responsive we are and how um, good they feel when they've made contact with somebody so quickly. So I'll give you an example. Our culinary manager is also a chef. She works, she books cook days for herself. So she's working a lot of the time. So she might not be able to answer the phone. But on the message, it says, leave us your email and she emails them or texts them back within 10 minutes. Hi, I got your message. Can you talk at two o'clock today? Or I got your message. I'm so excited to hear about your dinner party. Um, I will not be available until 10 p.m. tonight. Can you talk tomorrow morning at 8 a.m.? Whatever it is. Make a rule for yourself of how you're going to get back to people and the time frame. I was coaching somebody and she was upset that her business didn't take off. She had no regular clients. She was spinning her wheels going crazy. No reason for it. She was an excellent chef. She had a ton of good shit going for her. And I said, what are you doing when your leads come in? And she's like, I don't know. I, I reply to them in like a day or two. And I'm like, who wants to hear back from you in a day or two? They want to hear back from you right then. If you are not available right then, you got to tell them that and know when you're going to get back to them. So make a rule. I will be in touch with people within two hours. 
or I will do this, or I'm going to have an automatic reply that says this, whatever it is, make a rule. Okay. I talked to you about location. This is on your contact page. Ideally, ideally, it must also be on your home page. It needs to be on a header. It needs to be on a footer. It needs to be where people could see it. You must tell people where you are. Don't assume because you know where you are. These people know where you are. They don't. Some of these cities are huge. Phoenix is huge. I don't want to drive all the way to the other side of the airport, you know, an hour and 15 minutes away. We don't service that area. So that's there. Okay. Let's talk about the last thing. Who understands what I'm talking about? Who is more, feels better about their website and wants to really add some stuff and make it better from what you learned so far? Let me know in the comments on that. Okay, we're going to talk about number five. Let's do a quick recap. We are talking about the five things that you need on your website to bring quality leads. The first one is the look and feel of your site. The second one is talking to the right person. The third is keeping your content up to date. And the fourth, we talked about the main pages to have on your site. Number five is your services page. I'm going to go into that in a little detail. This is important. This is why they're here. They need a service. They need your help. So you need to clearly explain what they get. That's the only thing they care about. I don't want to break your uh, your dreams over here, but they only care about themselves. <laughs> so you want to show people what they get right off the bat. There's no guesswork. Um, make sure you're doing it in language that is easy to understand and ask a couple of people, does this make sense? Ask your family, ask people you work with, ask your neighbors. Look at this site and tell me what you think. Tell me, does this make sense what you get? If they have a hard time understanding, they will not book a call with you or pick up the phone. Keep it simple and only offer one to three services. It should not be a smorgasbord of 600 things because people don't know what they want. You know how you could help them and that's what we do on the phone call, but they need to be like funneled into a smaller, narrow path just to even get on the phone. So when you offer one to three services, you're either falling in one of three of those categories. Okay, I don't want a cooking class. I'm not here for a dinner party. I need somebody to come to my home once a week and make my family food. Okay, she does that. That's what we want. Personally, I like just to do two services. There's no reason to do more because once you get on the phone, you customize it to them. And you could say that on the website. Like, um, this is our most popular package. Here's what you get. We can customize your portions and your, you know, selections. Book a call here. That's what I got for you. That's the five. The services page is important. Don't make it huge. Don't make it long. Don't make it confusing. Let's see who has any questions. Okay. Katie, you're going to put your pricing. We did that. Okay, Lori, I think I'll add... I think I'll look, wait, hold on. I think I'll look at adding some pricing on my website as you discussed. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. If it's been working for you before, that's one thing. If you feel like you want it to work better or you're, I mean, I switched over when I was getting crap leads. I mean, I don't want people calling me from Tucson or calling me from, you know, just blatantly stuff I don't do or pricing that they can't afford. So that's what's you. Okay, Matthew. I'm trying to find ways to be clear of what Chef Simone offers. I feel her personal chef page isn't specific enough on what it offers. Also, what if she provides more than weekly services? Yeah, so you could do, I mean, I said up one to three services. You guys do something different. So you have a totally separate catering thing. I don't know. I know you um, have a separate page for that and a separate everything, and you're trying to build up the personal chef side of it. So like you just said, make sure people know that they're in the right place once they're there and what the personal chef service actually means. That is the best way to differentiate from that because you provide a, a broader range, uh, including wedding and stuff, and you have the commissary and stuff. So 
your thing's a little different. Um, when you do provide such different services, even though they're all culinary related, you're getting in your net a lot more people because you're having people come to your site for wedding stuff, maybe. And then once they're there, they're like, oh, she does personal chef. But those might not be the people that want that. Or if you're getting personal chef people, I could come to your site and be like, oh, they're a wedding caterer. Or I don't have a 300-person party. My party is only 20. So get clear on who you want to contact you and talk in the language that they talk in. Tell me if that makes sense. Okay, any more questions? We've been chit-chatting for a bit. Um, some cool announcements are we. I'm going to be doing a live five-day online challenge directly related to your personal chef website. And this is going to be a free online workshop. It's going to be a challenge workshop, meaning it is all content helping you get your best website up there so it can get you leads. If you do not have a website that brings you inquiries and leads consistently, you will not make enough money. And you'll be relying on other websites like Thumbtack or word of mouth or other things to give you your income when you could be in control of your website and how many people book you and see you. So this is a topic that I love. It is so important to me. I call my website like our cash machine because it literally is. Um, if I didn't have it, I mean, we have tons of other things that we do and I would go old school and I would go back to like doing what I used to do when I started. But the website is a game changer. It is the reason why professional athletes call us every single week. It is the reason why we are able to attract such good clients over and over and over. So that is something I want to help you guys with. If that's interesting to you, put like a yes in here or an icon and I'll be sure that you guys get the link when that starts. It's going to be in about two weeks. It's going to be an awesome free online event. You will have a website with such clarity and the option to just help you in a way that you've never even understood. I mean, I hear from people all the time that are like, Thumbtack sucks and nobody calls me. What? How do I get a client? How do I get a client? And you must do like real life activities also at the same time, but concurrently building your website. It takes months and months and months to get it up and ranked and valid and visible but once it's done you cannot even turn it off literally I was pregnant with my first child almost four years ago and I was like I want to take a break I don't want to do this anymore um I had people working for me but I just didn't want to do it I turned off my Google voice phone and people just kept calling me they would call my home line they would call my landline they would call my husband at work like it just doesn't stop because the website is ranked and known and you you can't even turn it off if you wanted to. So I, it is literally our cash machine. So I hope that excites you guys. I hope you learned something here today and we'll be doing that email soon, registering for that. Come enjoy this teaching again. I breezed through it kind of fast. Um, you'll also be getting an email about this teaching with everything broken down and please share it if you feel like somebody you know is struggling with this or just you like the content and a group you're in or um just like another page you're on would like it definitely share it and if you have if you're watching it on a replay you can write any questions in here i will come back and check that out soon so i hope you guys enjoyed i will talk to you soon and have a good day bye